Hello, hello. So, you want to learn about the 6-2 service rotation. The first thing you're going to want to go over is the overlapping rule in volleyball. If you don't fully understand what that rule is yet, check out the link in the description. It's going to explain everything. If you already understand the overlapping rule, then you're ready to get started on learning the 6-2 rotation. One of the main advantages of running a 6-2 is that we will always have three hitters in the front row. This is because our setter, which I have here labeled in green, is always going to be in the right back position playing defense. Now let's look at the initial positions of all the players on the court. In the right back, in green, we have our setter. Right front in red, we have an outside hitter. Middle front in pink, we have a middle hitter. Left front in blue, we have a right side hitter. Left back, again in red, is another outside hitter. And middle back, in pink is another middle hitter. One of the first things that happens in the beginning of the game is that the middle hitter in the back row is going to swap out with our libero in yellow. One of the key components of running a 6-2 is that we always have three passers in the back row. This is because we want our setter to never take the first ball. Usually our three passers are going to be my two outside hitters and my libero. Sometimes we'll have the right side hitter pass in the back row instead, but I'll talk about those examples in the end. For now, just think about having two outside hitters and the libero pass in the back row in a 6-2. To set up rotation 1, my outside hitter in the front row is going to pull back and pass in front of the setter. My setter can step back into the right a little bit as to not overlap that passer. This also allows the setter to get a clearer path to the setter's home position after that first pass is made. My right side hitter can pull back a little bit right around the 10 foot line to catch anything short. So rotation one looks like this. After that first pass is made, now we have to transition to run our offense. So my setter is going to run to the setting position. My middle hitter is going to transition straight back. But notice how my outside hitter and my right side hitter are on the opposite sides from their normal hitting positions. Instead of having those two hitters transition all the way across the net to get to their normal hitting sides, what we'll do is something called stay one. So my outside hitter is actually going to stay on the right side for one hit. So this player is going to transition to the right side. And my right side hitter is going to stay one on the outside and transition to the outside. So rotation one, transitioning to our offense, looks like this. After we hit the ball over the net, we have to move into base defense. No matter what rotation we start in, base defense will always look the same. To set that up, my front row outside hitter will be on the left side of the court at the net. My middle hitter will be in the middle at the net. My setter will be right along the 10 foot line on the right side. My right side hitter will be in the right side at the net. My libero will be on the left side right along the 10 foot line and my back row outside hitter is going to be right along the middle, closer towards the end line. Again, base defense will always look like this, no matter what rotation we start in. Now let's move on to rotation 2. I moved all the players back to their initial positions for rotation 1, but after we rotate, these are the new initial positions for rotation 2. Notice how I have a new outside hitter in the front row. This outside hitter has now moved into the back row. To set up rotation 2, my setter is going to step right behind my right side hitter in the front row. 
this is going to leave a giant hole in the middle of the back court. So my libero is going to step and fill in that gap. And then that leaves a gap in the left side of the court. So my outside here in the front row is going to pull back and cover in that spot. My middle hitter in the front row can cover anything short along the 10 foot line. So rotation two looks like this. When this happens, the players need to make sure that they don't overlap each other. My setter can't step in front of my right side hitter. My libero can't step to the right of my setter. And my outside hitter that's in the front row can't step behind my libero. After that first pass is made, it's time to transition to run our offense. So my setter is going to move into the setting spot. My middle is going to transition straight to the middle. My right side hitter is going to transition to the right side. And my outside hitter is going to transition to the outside. When transitioning in this case, players in this region especially need to make sure that they don't run into each other. Also note here that my right side hitter and my middle hitter don't need to stay one. This is because they're relatively close to their normal hitting positions. Rotation 2 transitioning to the offense looks like this. After we hit the ball over the net, it's time to go back into base defense. So the setter is going to go right along the 10-foot line on the right side, the right side hitter, right side at the net, middle hitter, middle at the net, outside hitter in the front row, left side at the net, libero, left side right along the 10-foot line, and my outside hitter in the back row, middle back, closer to the end line. Let's move on to rotation three. These are the initial positions for rotation two, so let's rotate. Notice how my libero is in the front row and I have a middle hitter in the back row. My second middle is gonna switch with the libero that's in the front row. And this libero is gonna switch back in for the middle hitter that's in the back row. These are the new initial positions in rotation three. To set up rotation three, the setter is gonna move close to the center of the court right along the 10 foot line. And this outside hitter is gonna fill in that gap to pass. Remember the overlapping rules? The front row outside hitter can't step behind the back row outside hitter or to the left of the middle hitter. Likewise, the setter can't step to the right of the outside hitter or in front of the middle hitter. So setting up rotation three looks like this. After the first pass is made, it's time to transition again to run our offense. So the setter is going to move to the setting position. The right side hitter will just transition to the right. The outside hitter will transition to the outside and the middle will transition to the middle. Rotation three, transitioning to run the offense looks like this. After the ball is set and hit over the net, it's time to go back into base defense. So the setter is gonna go right back at the 10 foot line, right side hitter, right side at the net, middle hitter, middle at the net, front row outside hitter, left side at the net, libero, left back at the 10 foot line, the outside hitter at the back row is gonna stay at the middle back. So after rotations one, two, and three, what does rotation four look like? These are the initial positions for rotation three, so let's rotate once again. Remember, in a 6-2 rotation, we always want to have three hitters in the front row. Since my setter is now in the front row, we'll have a second right side hitter 
substitute for that setter into front row. And we'll have a second setter substitute for this right side hitter in the back row. Does this look familiar? If you're thinking that this looks like rotation one, that's because it basically is. The only difference here is that I have a new setter and a new right side hitter. Okay, so if rotation four is exactly like rotation one, what does rotation five look like? Let's rotate one more time. Wait a second. Rotation 5 looks like rotation 2. So if 4 looks like 1 and 5 looks like 2, can you guess what rotation 6 is going to look like? Ba -ba! Let's rotate it one more time. Again, my libero is in the front row and I have a middle hitter in the back row. So, my second middle is going to switch with my libero, and the libero is going to switch back in for the middle hitter in the back row. If you think that rotation 6 looks like rotation 3, you're exactly right. The only differences between rotations 1, 2, and 3, and 4, 5, and 6 are who my setter and my right side hitter are. The two outside hitters need to make sure they know what position they're in. If they're in the front row, they need to make sure that they pull back to pass on to serve receive and then transition to run the offense. After the ball is hit over the net, they need to make sure that they go into their correct base defense. The front row player needs to stay front row on the left side of the net and the back row needs to make sure that it stays middle back. If we rotate one more time, My setter is again in the front row position. So our right side hitter is going to substitute for the front row setter. And then the setter is going to substitute for the back row right side hitter. And just like that, we're back to rotation one. I explained in the beginning of this video that we sometimes have the right side hitter pass. We normally do this if the surface rotation isn't working out as strongly as we wanted. For example, in rotation one, If we struggle to pass in this formation, what we'll do is called swinging the passers. Ba -ba! The setter and front row outside hitter are going to push all the way up to the net. Because there's now a gap on the right side, little barrel is going to swing and fill in that position. The back row outside hitter is going to swing and fill in the middle back, and the right side hitter now gets to pull back and pass in that left back position. Even if we swing the players this way for rotation one, we can't forget the overlapping rule. The libero can't step to the right of the setter, the setter can't step in front of the outside hitter, and the right side hitter can't step behind the outside hitter. Transitioning to offense in this way is exactly the same. Because my right side hitter and my outside hitter are on the opposite sides of the court, we're going to stay one. So the right side hitter will transition to the outside, the middle hitter will transition to the middle, the outside hitter will transition to the right side, and the setter will go back to the setting position. After the ball is hit over the net, that's when my outside and my right side hitters need to switch in the front row to get into base defense. And that's basically it. Congrats, you just learned the 6-2 service rotation. Give yourself a pat on the back and a cookie because you deserve it. One thing I didn't go over in this video is covering our hitters when we're attacking the ball. That's something I can talk more about in a future video. Any questions, feelings, concerns, reactions? Leave a comment below. Or if you have a suggestion for a future video, leave that below as well.